Hi, I'm Chris Chernohoy from the University of Wisconsin River Falls. And who is with me today? None other than Pat O'Keefe. Happy to be here. Pat O'Keefe has been a part of the music department for a long time, and he is a multifaceted musician. Known as a clarinetist, he's done a couple really important concertos with the symphony band. Yep. And you are in new music, mm -hmm. doing world premieres all over the place. Mm -hmm. You do a lot with world music, mm -hmm. and yet you still have those what we call classical chops. <laughs> Please welcome Pat O'Keefe. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Pat, tell us just a little bit about your background. Oh, gosh. Well, that's a really long story. Okay, um, keep it short. Keep Where it did you go to school and how long have you been here? What oh, else do you love to do? Okay. Um, uh, I went to school. At, my undergraduate was at Indiana University. Uh, Dr. Milne and I were at Indiana at the same time in the 80s. And then I went on for my master's at New England Conservatory in Boston. And then I was principal clarinetist in the Augusta Symphony in Augusta, Georgia for five seasons. And then I moved out to San Diego where I pursued my doctorate at the University of California, San Diego. And then I moved back uh, up to this area around 1999. And I started teaching here at UWRF in 2001. So this fall coming up will be my 20th year here. The other piece of music that you'll be doing on this program that you've chosen for our right. audience is? Um, I'm going to play a transcription of an unaccompanied solo by Eric Dolphy on bass clarinet called God Bless the Child. This was a piece that was made famous by Billie Holiday. And then Eric Dolphy was, uh, created a sort of a bass clarinet fantasia around this melody. If you know the melody, if you know Billie Holiday's recording, it's not always easy to pick it out because it's so florid what he does. But like I was saying before about how instruments are created by their repertoire and by their players, you know, the bass clarinet was around for a long time since the mid-19th century, and it was a staple in band music and in orchestra music, and there were nice solo things written for it, but it hadn't really come out to the fore as a soloist instrument, really until Eric Dolphy, the incredible jazz player, and he took the bass clarinet and did things no one had ever done with it before. No one had even conceived of playing the instrument in the way that he did. So, and this is a really, really fantastic solo that he created that was also fascinating because it's um, it's an unaccompanied piece. He didn't, this is not a piece that he did with a jazz quartet or something. He has tons of recordings of incredible playing on bass clarinet and alto sax and flute. He was a virtue also on all three. But in his, in his lifetime, he created two solo pieces that he performed as solos. One was God Bless the Child on bass clarinet and the other, I believe, was Tenderly on alto saxophone. And so at the time, in the early 60s, there weren't a lot of jazz musicians who were jazz wind players who were coming out playing unaccompanied solo pieces. There were a few, but not a lot. There's much more nowadays. So he was one of the first, but his rendition of God Bless the Child is really incredible. And it's been really beautifully transcribed. And so lots of bass clarinet players play it now. Um, it's a real, just great piece and is an important piece in our repertoire. Thank you. 
With me today is Ivan Konev. He's a pianist who is very important in our faculty and is an often guest at the coffee concert series. Ivan is going to be playing some Brahms. Tell us about your choice of music. 
Well, uh, Brahms, uh, the, the big piece on the program is the Brahms Sonata for clarinet and piano, uh, number two. Um, and to, uh, to complement that, we decided to have, uh, well, I decided to have a music of the same composer. Um, uh, and uh, particularly from the set, which I'm going to perform at the next coffee concert at the uh, end of uh, April or beginning of May. Um, and um, this is the set of three intermazzas from Opus 117. Just a beautiful, beautiful compositions. They are, uh, well, throughout the year, I learned quite a bit of repertoire, which is uh, uh, energetic and full of, um, uh, very dynamic and, um, um, this is a little bit different. I decided to take a take a step from from that and take a much softer, much more uh, m m more meditative, um, uh, almost resigned piece. And this is one of the late Brahms uh, Brahms compositions, which uh, um, has which has this 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 type of uh, character. Um, <clears throat> so much more contemplative piece. Um, and I thought. This would go well together with the sonata that we are playing with with Pataky. Uh, um, plus, it will give you some kind of preview of the next concert that we're going to have in a, in a month or so. Well, it's one of my favorite pieces, so I am thrilled to hear Opus 117, number two, correct? Number two, yeah. Before one. Number two, and it's beautiful and it's melodic and it does show his later maturity and kind of the height of romantic music with the deep swells and it's melancholy and it's um, pensive might be another word for it, huh?
So yeah. tell us about this piece of music and why you chose it for the coffee concert. Well, you know, uh, Yvonne and I have been talking about doing some Brahms for a long time, and he wrote two sonatas, and Yvonne kept saying, well, let's do number two, the E flat. I said, yeah, let's do it. I, just, I love that piece. And the thing that I'm, I really love about this piece, I mean, it's Brahms, it's amazing, but for me, the, the two things that I'll be playing on this concert reminds me of what some of my teachers told me, and, and I learned that all of our instruments, don't, it's not, the, the quality and the characteristic of your instrument doesn't just come from the instrument. It comes from the repertoire that was written for it and the players who played the instrument. And so the thing with the Brahms sonatas is that Brahms wrote them for a specific person. He had heard this amazing clarinetist named Richard Mufelt in Meiningen in the early 1890s. And he was so taken by Mufelt's playing, which was just incomparable, incredible tone, incredible phrasing, that he first wrote a, a trio for clarinet, piano, and cello, which Yvonne and I played with Charles Ash a couple years ago. And he also wrote a quintet for clarinet and string quartet. But then in 18, the summer of 1894, he wrote two sonatas for Mulfeld for clarinet and piano. Uh, opus 120, numbers one and two. The first one is an F minor, and then we're going to be playing the one in E flat major. And these were some of the last music that Brahms wrote. After this, there were a couple songs and I think a couple organ pieces, but then he passed away in 1897. So these are very much coming right at the very end of his life. And they're really, really wonderful pieces. So that's, I just love playing it. Well, and when we talk about that, when you say the end of his life, we get the mature yeah, drums. Very and much so, so how do you say that you just love it? What What is it about the quality of this and what kind of depth do we get through his life? Um, well, the music, you know, it's so expressive. First of all, his music is so expressive. It's like the, you know, rom the music of the Romantic era just has, there's a quality about it that is just, it's so rewarding for musicians to play. And I think Brahms is just at the very height of that, right? So it's just incredibly rewarding music to play. And he wrote it for uh, this clarinet player who was really wonderful and he just really knew how to write for the instrument very well although it's not meant to be a, it's not a virtuosic showpiece by any way um it certainly has its challenges but it's not that kind of piece it's just very very deep and soulful in terms of the musicality and it leaves you so much room to express so we're really excited to jump into it that is really a gift to our listeners <laughs> thank brahms he wrote this amazing music so we're just happy to do it